All right, hey guys, and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today we're gonna to be talking a little bit more about the VSE. This is part of the video sequence editor series on my channel. And um, what we're gonna be doing today is talking about uh, audio in Blender and uh, how to edit it. Um, now, let me say this before I get into any of the tools. Blender is not used as a professional audio editing software. Don't go into this expecting to be able to edit crazy amounts of attributes with your audio files. It's just basic small adjustments that can uh, help us change uh, things up a little bit and uh, make sure everything sounds perfect and good and stuff. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it. You can see I'm in the video sequence editor. I'm in my both the preview and, um, and my actual sequencer view. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, press shift A in here and add a sound. And I'm going to go to my uh, desktop, actually, because I already have a party horn sound chosen. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to move this to zero. And uh, actually, we're going to move it about over here. So now um, I'm just going to play it once. And you can, you know, hear that party horn right there. All right. So we press in with uh, this thing selected. Now you can see here there are several options under sound. We're not going to look at all of these at the moment. We're just going to look at the sound panel. Now the sound panel allows us to obviously do a few things here. This is the standard file type and file name. So we could change this to horn uh, 01 right here. So now the uh, the sound actual sound name will be horn 01, even though this is the directory for it. So now that just keep that in mind. So uh, this won't change anything directly, but when you're going to uh, unpack this say from the, uh, from the blend file, this will affect what the, uh, file is called, I believe. So just keep that in mind. So now you see here, this is the directory where our file is. There's three options here, caching, draw waveform, and pack. We're going to talk about draw waveform first. So you can see here, draw waveform actually just does draw where the sound is. So you can see here when our thing goes along and there's the party horn right there. So you can see it draws out the sound uh, waveform exactly as it would be in any other program. So that's good. Um, you'll notice here that it is not tick based blender is not tick based um, because like i said it's not a professional audio editing software they don't mean for you to be super fine editing just basic editing in blender if you want to do something more specific you would use audacity so there's that so we have our draw waveform uh i've noticed uh, especially on older computers draw waveform can sometimes slow down performance especially with the video sequence editor i think that is a combination of a bug and just being able to draw waveforms especially really nice uh you know high sample files requires a lot of memory so that's something to keep in mind too if you're dealing with a project with a lot of sound files you should probably only turn on the waveform if you need to but the waveform is really helpful for editing so then we uh take over a look here at caching now uh caching is basically if you know what the image sequence caching is it's basically the same thing for the sound file and if you don't i'm going to explain it so when i press alt a every frame that this goes over every frame of the sound file is currently being cached and now that our cursor has run its full course through that the sound is now cached to the ram which means that there is no buffer time on this so the sequence editor won't slow down in blender and uh, it helps us speed up the uh, process when we have a lot of audio files but um I found that most audio files get loaded fairly quickly into the RAM, so caching is not necessary. And I've also seen some crashing bugs with caching, although not in the most recent version, which I am currently on 2.66, and I have not had any problems with caching. So I think that may have been fixed, but I'm not sure. Don't take my word for it. I, I don't know for sure. Now you see here, pack, this is the standard. Um, just like in image files, when we go to pack them, this will save the... Um, save the sound file into our blend file. So it will make the blend file larger, yes, but it'll also allow us to transport this to other computers without having to worry about file associations. So that's a really nice feature there. But let's get down to the actual parts here. Of course, the trim duration is nothing new. That's the same. You can trim where your audio file is going to be and um, it allows you to determine where it starts. So if I wanted to start about midway through the horn, I can go here and now if I press Alt A, you can see here that it just started midway through the horn. So that's also something kind of cool there, but you can do this with image sequences as well. Now the three main things that are really specific to sound here, volume, pitch, and pan. Now pan, um, we're going to talk about first and we're going to work our way back up because I think it might as well tackle the second hardest one first. It's just the way I would like to go. So pan. Um, works uh, with stereo and um, this is the nice thing about Blender if you're 
sound file is mono when you import it. Blender will create a stereo file, just duplicating the mono and then dividing volume in half for each of them. So that uh, pan is basically, when you have a stereo track, it come, there is one uh, sound file playing in your left ear and the other sound file playing in your right ear. Pan allows us to control which ear the sound file is playing in. If we play completely in one, or a uh, two, sorry, two is the farthest right, I believe, and then negative two is the farthest left. So now if we play the sound, I don't know if you all can hear it, but I believe that you should be able to hear it only in your right ear. It might be in your left ear, depending on which earbud you have in which ear, because some earbuds are labeled left or right. So that's something if you didn't know, you now know. So basically pan just allows us to uh, move stereo. We can also, of course, animate any of these values, allowing us to have, if a rocket is coming from the left side of the screen over here to the right side, we can have it pan from the left to the right. So you can edit in a little bit of surround sound, not a lot, but a little bit. Um, so that's also a really neat feature. Now the pitch, um, pitch is basically, uh, I'm going to, I'm not a, audio person especially so I don't really know I can't explain exactly how pitch works but basically pitch is the speed of the uh, the overall sound file so you'll see here right now we have a pitch of 1 if we turn it down to a pitch of 0.5 and we press alt a you'll notice that the horn sound is playing a lot slower than it was at uh, at first and if we do the same here for 1.5 pitch you'll now hear that the file is playing quite a bit faster you can hear that right there so um, that is also something really cool. You can once again edit pitch so you can make this come up. So let's say I have this like that and then come down here. You can hear the big difference in the sound right there, I believe, if you're hearing what I'm hearing through my earphones. So, and then our final one is the volume slider. Now the volume slider is exactly what you would think it is. It's just the overall volume. So right now, if we're at one, we can change down to 0.1 and you'll notice that as you can see there, our sound is a lot quieter. And um, that's about it for uh, sound. One more thing to notice. Oops, I'm sorry, clicked the wrong button there. Um, if you go to edit strip and you click this I over here under the opacity, it will not play the sound file, but it will not change the volume and anything of the other properties. So that's also something to keep in mind. This allows you to uh, deselect files you don't want hearing, but you don't want to you know move or delete or turn down the volume of because you know they're sensitive and already animated. So that's also something to keep in mind. You can lock these as well, which will keep it from moving this, but that's a, a standard feature with any strip you put into the VSE. So that's something to keep in mind. Well, that's about all we have time for today. And I hope you all learned some basic sound editing today in the VSE and uh, see you next time.